warp speed. And the steering. Oh, the steering. Hello, hello guys. This is the Car Guy Perspective once again. And today we have a very, very special video. In front of me, we've got the McLaren Artura. And boy, let me tell you about this car because I've had it for the past few days and it has been an insane car to drive in London, outside of London, everywhere really. First of all, let me just kneel down and give you a little bit of a look. It's an absolute beauty of a car. This replaces the uh, 570 uh, generation. Well, it doesn't, it's not like an update, it completely replaces it. Brand new technology, brand new everything. So, this is the um, newest iteration of McLaren technology and I mean oh god just look at it what a beauty twin exhaust on the rear it says McLaren Artura in here this is the famous chimney <laughs> if you put your hand on here it's uh, quite hot apparently the internal um, engine bay um, temperature reaches about 900 degrees which is absolutely wild and that's why we've got the chimney uh, in the rear and uh, yeah I mean this car is an absolute weapon to look at this particular version is in the serpentine green color and I'm not sure how well it comes on camera but I mean this color is fantastic it's probably the best color McLaren has right now in my opinion anyway it's absolutely beautiful wrapped in uh, specially developed Pirelli P0s these have been uh, developed in unison with uh, McLaren so these are perfect for this car they've got chips inside the actual tire so we can measure all sorts of stats and uh, what not I'm not technical enough to tell you but yeah you can see all the bits and bobs on the uh, dash inside and I'll get to that later we've got 20 inch uh, alloys I believe these are magnesium wheels but I might be wrong so don't quote me on that got ceramic brakes all around six pot in the front four pot in the rear and yeah it's a lot of stopping power but as with every McLaren you really have to press that brake pedal because it's not very forgiving I mean I found myself a couple of times at the light stop pressing the brake as you do in any car and the car will start rolling forward so you really have to press that pedal it's gonna make you work We've got a huge vent here and a huge uh, <laughs> vent, a huge uh, arch um, coming from the roof, joining the uh, the back. It's just full of like angles and shapes and holes and oh, I absolutely love it. Massive diffuser on the rear. You can see the gearbox or whatever that is in the back. This is a three, uh, three litre V6 twin turbo coupled with an electric engine as well. However, this is a hybrid, but it's not the typical kind of hybrid like you get in a Prius. This shares the same sort of similar ideology, you know, technology with the P1, where the electric engine actually makes the car more powerful and more, uh, it helps the petrol engine. So it's not really a hybrid. It's quite a bit of noise here. There's a railway right next to me in an airport, so not the best location. <laughs> Uh, to start making a video, but it looks pretty cool. I believe you can uh, agree on that But yeah, what a thing this is. I mean, it's an absolute beauty. Let me just grab the key There is the key for you. Nothing special really. It's got quite a bit of weight to it. It's quite nice Press the McLaren logo opens up the car Beautiful lights as always all McLarens have this cheeky smile. I mean Look at it <laughs> it's got fangs and everything oh it's so aggressive on the road it's so aggressive uh, let me just pop inside quickly got a button underneath this little uh, know, little crevice here you press it window goes down and then you can release the door absolute beauty doors go up Batmobile of course let me just pop inside quickly All right, we are inside the Artura right now. What I love is as you pull left hand stalk to uh, restore save position. So if we pull this 
stock you will see that the instrument cluster follows the steering wheel which is absolutely amazing see it's built into the actual and i banged my head on the on the door still here on the roof line it's a very low car and i'm not particularly short um i'm six foot one and this is almost as far back as i can go really in this car it's comfortable for now um but you know if you're any taller than six foot six foot one you have a slight issue but hey that's with all supercars and you can reach in here and pull this big old door shut it's got very nice stereo bauer what was it bauer wilkins i always forget the name of this brand lovely speakers this car is actually the first mclaren with a subwoofer and it's actually built into the chassis because it's a carbon fiber monocoque and it's built inside the monocoque so you can when the bass is uh you know if you, if you go a bassy song you feel it <laughs> everywhere it's quite cool it's gonna put the key here on my uh fuel receipt we'll get to that later <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the interior, as you know, as McLarens are, they're not the craziest interior, but I absolutely love it. It's simple, it's well built, the seats are insanely supportive, however, you can't really adjust the backrest, so you are in a sort of locked position, which can be somewhat uncomfortable on long journeys. Uh, my lower back starts to hurt sometimes, but then again, you don't buy this car for it the comfort you just buy it because you want to drive it and that's what it's for because this steering it's all about it this the steering in this car and presumably all other mclarens but in this car is so phenomenal it's got double wishbones in the front some intricate suspension on the rear which i cannot even tell you about it's it's something mclaren has developed specifically for this car uh, because it had issues in the past with the other cars under oversteering too much and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, it's got some fancy um, suspension in the rear, double wishbones in the front, and the hydraulic steering wheel. No electric bullshit, none of that hydraulic. You feel every single bump in the road, and frankly, that's a beautiful thing to me. It can get tiresome at some points because you have to be on point with it. You can't just relax and you know you hit a bump and it's gonna jerk the steering wheel so you gotta be on it however that's what it's for that's what this car is and you can have it in electric or in petrol or both like a hybrid so right now i've got three miles range the full um capacity of the battery is about 18 on paper but i think it's more like 15 13 on the real world actually and you can drive that full electric like not a problem or you can drive it in um full petrol and that will charge the battery if you drive in track mode the battery will charge in like 10 15 minutes to 100 percent. so that's pretty good that's the 12 volt battery that's the actual uh, hybrid battery um range wise i mean it does about 16 to 20 mpg combined um that's what it's been doing uh, for the past week that i've had it it's not it's not bad for what it is i mean you've got 650 horsepower and it's just a weapon it doesn't even weigh that much though because the only weighs up uh, 1550 ish kilos uh it's a small car well small car it looks small but it's not really small it's over two meters wide and uh, four meters long so it's it's quite a quite a thing uh, but yeah it's um it's a supercar <laughs> you know and i'm not gonna start in electric because actually you know what i'll start in electric and i'll go around the parking lot let me wear my seat belt and that's an electric right now so if i start hopefully it'll start in electric and there we go we are in a full electric I'll release the steering the parking and here we are we're driving a McLaren full electric. This is an empty parking lot, so it doesn't really matter which way I'm going. But yeah, I'm just gonna wrap around here in full electric. Window down. It makes weird sounds. But it's so cool. And then, Nice uh, culinary there to sport or comfort. So the engine kicks in and 
it's a thing of beauty, this engine. And we're gonna go up now, and I'll show you what this is all about. And as I was saying, uh, just leaving the parking lot, I had a bit of an issue with the uh, with the ticket. They never gave me a ticket when I go in the parking and uh, had to call for help <laughs> so they can let me out of the parking lot. But uh, yeah, all good now. And um, I'm just making uh, my way out. Let this gentleman go first because uh, I'm gonna be quite slow. <laughs> Let me do the nose lift up because this car has a nose lift system. Should probably close the window because this thing is loud, and I'm not sure how well you guys are gonna hear me if I keep uh, the window down. There you go, nose is lifted, and to be honest with you, it raises the nose quite high. I mean, a lot higher than uh, you would expect. It gives you a huge clearance in the front. Uh, basically, driving a McLaren uh, SUV. That's the uh, uh, that's the trend nowadays. So I wouldn't be uh, surprised if I uh, see that soon. <laughs> Hopefully not. But yeah. Um, given I am now in a multi-story car park, which is it's not the tightest thing in the world. Uh, however. We are in a supercar. I tell you what, because you are so far forward, not even that far forward, you are far, you're, are far forward and the nose is slanted downwards and the nose is not too long, you, you have so much visibility. I mean, just navigating through London and navigating through these parking lots, you, you would think it feels really scary. However, it doesn't. It feels better than in my 340i, <laughs> the BMW. 3 series it, uh, it's just great there's so much visibility everywhere even when you drive you've got great visibility through the rear on the sides there is no blind spot because you know those little um archways on the rear that i pointed out earlier you can see i mean you can probably see that and behind me as well it's just it's great <laughs> it's basically a daily and you could easily daily this car if uh, if you wanted to, especially you got a 15 miles of um, electric power, easy daily, especially in a place like London where you go in and out of London, charge the battery up, easy money, and uh, nose down, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great car. <laughs> it's a great car to drive around, not to mention on a country road because that's just ridiculous ridiculous performance and another thing this car catches everyone's eye especially in this color it's such a naughty color i don't know how well it comes on camera i'll just put a photo up right now and you will see what i mean by this color it's spectacular um but yeah it's everywhere i went with this car at least one person stopped me doesn't matter Central London, random sh shop car park, Starbucks, whatever. I just I, this guy just follow the ambulance on a on a red light. Fair enough, mate. Right? <laughs> but yeah, it's a spectacular car, and I do not understand what is happening. <laughs> Got distracted anyway. But yeah, interior during the uh, the day because that parking lot is quite quite dark. Um, you're able to see it here. We are gonna take a left here. You can see how it's picking up all the stones on the ground with those big old tires. And yeah, let me give you a few downshifts. It sounds really good this car sounds fantastic it's only a v6 only a v6 but this v6 makes such a beautiful noise honestly it sounds so raw and you can hear it right behind you of course it's a mclaren it's a supercar <laughs> uh, but you can hear it right behind you and 
oh, the, the sound it makes and it raves to 8400 rpm it's wild or 300 i'm not sure four of 300 um it's wild and in that last 1.5k from 7000 onwards it just howls it makes a ridiculous sound however around here first gear will, will take me to illegal speeds <laughs> so <laughs> it's a bit of a problem and that's the biggest problem with this car it goes zero to illegal very quickly i mean ridiculously quickly quickly if you top out second gear you are going way above the speed limit uh, in most places even on the motorway the gear sh the gear shifts are phenomenal and let me tell you what because this has an electric engine they used a dct with eight gears forwards so it's got eight gears going forwards because there is no reverse because that is electric so it uses the electric engine to go in reverse so that means if you drain the battery you cannot go backwards <laughs> however the car is pretty smart and it has a um like a hold feature for the battery so it will hold some battery for you but you could technically drain it if you try hard enough i haven't done it and i'm not planning to <laughs> because that would be quite embarrassing but yeah you can charge this at the um at your house and i think that's it i don't i don't even know if you can charge it at the actual port like those big boards where you charge the normal electric cars because uh, it doesn't support the whatever voltage charging. I know nothing about electric cars, so spare me. <laughs> so yeah, it's this car is a it's literally like the P1 technology where you've got the engine and then you've got the electric engine to help the torque gaps and all that jazz. It's fantastic. But as I said many times now this is all about the steering this car has some fantastic steering you can feel every single bump in the road every single undulation everything it's it's tremendous i absolutely love it and all these speed bumps the nose is not raised right now it's low you know to the ground it doesn't even bother it i mean if you don't go super fast you'd be all right with most speed bumps i haven't encountered a single issue around london with this car granted a few times i have raised the uh, the nose so i can you know make sure i don't scratch but i'm sure i would have been fine without raising any any nose or anything the squeaky stuff you might hear it's the ceramic brakes they make so much noise for no reason <laughs> because it's ceramics uh and that's what you might be hearing behind you oh you can hear everything and as I said it's a it's very much an eye-catcher this car everybody that you pass will look at you so there is no being inconspicuous in this car to be fair though the funniest thing about this car is when I drive in full electric and I just sneak up on people and they just you know nonchalantly look one way you know just mind their own business and then they do a double take <laughs> when they see the car it's just like this demon vampire looking thing just sitting there right next to you because of the electric engine and never had any sort of idea but yeah no it's it's such a weapon this and when you drive it on electric motor which by the way can go up to 81 miles an hour i believe and that's ridiculous 81 miles an hour granted if you do 80 miles an hour i'm pretty sure the battery will last a whopping two miles <laughs> because even in the normal traffic it doesn't last too long however as i said i went into london with it and it was more than enough 
it got me to London. Then around London, I started the petrol engine and drove about. It charged up the battery, not a problem. So yeah, it's great daily this. <laughs> if you want, if you're considering a, a daily, don't get the Prius or the Prius. <laughs> get this, it's great. <laughs> It'll set you back only about two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Nothing too crazy. What else can I tell you about this car besides shutting up and letting you hear this monstrosity behind me? So, in here we've got, of course, the paddle shifters, which you can shift up and down from one side because they're linked up behind the steering wheel, so they do this movement here. With the paddles, we've got a selector knob here for the screen on the left, which of course doesn't work. Oh, no, I'm the stupid one. Uh, you can move around the information there. I'm not sure how well you can see. Uh, got a bunch of things going on launch available uh, on the right side you can't move anything you can't touch that on the right here this stalk is a cruise control and it's got adaptive cruise control but that's it it's just follows the car in front keeps you at a certain speed and that is it uh, nothing uh, nothing crazy it's also got lane assist but it's not gonna steer for you it's just gonna shout at you if you touch <laughs> the the lane in the middle so it's not particularly helpful um, because you know it doesn't steer for you but anyway you don't care I personally don't give a hit about this <laughs> so yeah it's, it's it does plenty of things it's got a steering wheel it's got pedals a shit ton of power it's good for me <laughs> it is good for me that's all I need it's rear wheel drive, 650 horsepower on the rear because the electric engine is coupled to the transmission so it goes all to the back. At first, I thought, not at first, before I picked it up, I was convinced this car was uh, all wheel drive and then I had a bit of a Google search. I figured it out and I was quite excited and scared at the same time because it's 650 on the rear. I decided to cut the video there because I was stuck in a bit of traffic but now we are on the motorway or well, a road and hopefully I'll get a little chance to show you the potential of this machine you probably heard the traction control kicking in there but the thing is you can hear it but you can't feel it like it's just the slightest jerk in the in the back and that's it like it's not really aggressive you can just power it through it obviously you shouldn't be doing that while you know taking a corner or something because you will end up sideways if you don't know what you're doing <laughs> but it, the, the, the traction control is so good So, um, sorry guys, <laughs> that's the city life for you. I'm not, I uh, don't really have a choice. Uh, motorways at this hour are absolutely packed. It's 7.30 and motorways are packed. So I'm not even gonna bother. The click of these pedals, he doesn't care. The click of these pedals is just so, chef's kiss, it's perfect. Such a good click, such a, a satisfying, you know, hit when you click these pedals I love it and that's the button to put in manual I haven't explained these two um, wings here these two and these two this controls the engine so you can put it from sport to comfort to electric and track and this controls the chassis so this is sport uh, comfort push upwards goes to sport and then it goes to track track makes this car really stiff and really really responsive I mean it's ridiculous res responsive right now however it does make you super super stiff so around British roads well around the roads in London really you don't really want to drive it in track because you will be just shaking like this <laughs> it wouldn't be the most pleasant thing in the world 
so I always keep in comfort. I put it in track when I was on some B roads the other day around uh, around uh, Hampshire, in the south of England, and that's where this car basically shines. Have it in sport for the chassis or track, have it in sport or track for the engine, and that's where it shines. It's perfect. I absolutely love to drive it like that such a weapon even like this i mean the steering gets insanely connected you know like it's just it, it's a bit of a weapon this car well i absolutely love it you know i said the the gearbox earlier super smooth sometimes it's not <laughs> sometimes it will kick you in the back and it will make a show uh but hey it's a mclaren so it, you know it does things as a mclaren does so yeah Honestly, as a uh, weekend car and even as a daily, because I dare say you could easily daily this car, you know, it's, it's really not that violent if you keep it in comfort. The only, my only complaint about it is the position of the backrest and it's great when you drive, but after a little while it gets pretty intense on the low back, for me anyway. I'll put it in comfort and sport and I'll give it some beans up here for you guys. Uh, I promise you won't tell anybody. But yeah, I'll give you a couple of beans here so you can hear the car mainly. probably heard the traction was kicking in quite uh, harshly in there because it's a wet surface the tires are wide 295s on the rear and uh, oh, through there now uh, 295 on the rear so you can't really expect much from it another thing about this car it will kick every single rock on the road it will kick it right up the wheel arch and you will not <laughs> in sport and a high rev this car is ridiculously loud I mean even in the cabin it gets quite um, quite loud in here so it gets tiring and uh, wouldn't recommend just keeping it in um, thank you mr. bus man let's put the wiper in automatic yeah, I mean, well, we're not the loudest thing around, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> of course, it's a random Civic. It's the same one that you hear at 2 a.m. when you're trying to sleep. It 
sounds so good. It sounds so good. People were complaining, oh, it's only a V6, it's only that, it's only this. Shut up. It sounds fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm in love with the soundtrack. If you go above 6,000 RPM, it's just ridiculously loud, ridiculously good. And the steering, oh, the steering. Such a good car this, such a good car, it's fantastic, absolute weapon and you, you might have noticed the battery percentage has gone up <laughs> because as I said if you drive it fairly aggressively uh, it'll charge the battery very quickly. If you drive it in track, I mean keep an eye on the, on the range, let me just pass this roundabout. So we reached the end of the video. Thank you very much guys for tuning in. I am gonna go back home now and into London and I do hope you've enjoyed the video of the McLaren Aratura. Final thoughts, this car is tremendous. It's an absolute unit of a car and it's, it's amazing, honestly. It's a hands down success from McLaren and I can't wait to see what the next iterations and generations will be like. So once again, thank you for joining. Thank you for sticking around. Please subscribe and uh, like the video if you've liked it. If not, I hope I can do better in the future. <laughs> anyway guys, peace out.